Hi all, welcome back to my channel. Today we can see principles of classification. Taxonomy is a science of biological classification. It has three parts, classification, nomenclature and identification. The most commonly used levels or ranks in taxonomy are species, genus, family, order, class and kingdom. What is a bacterial species? It's a collection of strains that share many stable properties. Strain is a population of organism that descend from a single organism, but they differ slightly from one another in many ways. For example, biovars, they are bacterial strains which are variable in some biochemical or physiological characteristics. Morphovars are variant bacterial strains with morphological differences. Serovars, they have distinctive antigenic properties. Then, Genus, it is a well-defined group of one or more species. And the binomial nomenclature system or, uh, is introduced by Carolus Linnaeus and this system is followed by microbiologists for naming microorganisms. According to this, the name has two parts. The first part is capitalized generic name and the second part is uncapitalized species name. Examples are given below. The classification system. Organisms can be grouped together based on either similarities, that is overall similarities to form a phenetic system or they can be grouped based on the probable evolutionary relationships to form phylogenetic system. Different classification systems are available. We can see first one is phenetic or Adansonian classification. It was introduced by Michael Adanson, best natural classification system. Here, grouping is done based on mutual similarity of their phenotypic characters. There is no phylogenetic analysis. Organisms sharing many characters are grouped in a single group. Phylogenetic classification. Here, it is based on evolutionary relationship and one character is used for division at each level. So, the resulting system or the classification it will, having, it will be having a phylogenetic tree-like appearance, that is branching tree-like appearance can be seen. One example is given here. One drawback is the characters used for classification may not be valid because of the absence of fossil records, that is there is no evidence. Molecular or genetic classification, one of the best method, mainly based on genetic relatedness. All properties are based on genes. Genetic relatedness is tested by DNA sequencing, DNA hybridization, determination of base composition and base ratio. Next is intraspecies classification. It is used to subclassify the bacterial species. It is for diagnostic and epidemiological purpose. Characters used are biochemical properties, antigenic properties, toxin production, etc. Two methods are employed, phenotypic method by electrophoresis and genotypic method by PCR, southern blotting, nucleotide sequence analysis, etc. Then next is numerical taxonomy. It is introduced or it, it is made possible with the development of computers. It's a quantitative ap approach. Grouping of taxonomic units into taxa are done on the basis of characters using numer numerical methods. Informations about the properties of organisms are converted into a form suitable for numerical analysis and are compared using a computer. Classification is based on general similarities. The process begins with the determination of the absence or presence of selected characters. Different data such as morphological, biochemical and physiological characters are included. After character analysis, an association coefficient is measured. Association coefficient is a function that measures the degree of or the agreement between the characters possessed by the organism. Symbol matching coefficient and Jacquard coefficient are the two coefficients used. Here, symbol matching coefficient is the most commonly used coefficient in bacteriology. It's a proportion of characters that match regardless of whether the character is present or absent. Jacquard coefficient is calculated by ignoring any characters that are absent in both organisms. Here we can see the calculation of association coefficient for two organisms. For comparing, we are taking two organisms A and B and the association coefficient and Jacquard coefficient, sorry, symbol matching coefficient and Jacquard coefficient is calculated. Here, four characters are taken. A is the number of characters present in both A and B. 
B and C are the different characters between two organisms and D is the characters absent in both organisms. So, the number of characters taken are four characters A plus B plus C plus D. According to simple matching coefficient, we are taking the characters uh, which are present or absent in both organisms. So, the equation becomes A plus D by A plus B plus C plus D. In Jacquard coefficient, we are ignoring the characters absent in both organisms. So, the equation becomes A by A plus B plus C. Okay. Then, after comparison, we can see that organisms with greater similarities are grouped together and separated from dissimilar organisms. Such group of organisms are called phenons or phenoms. And the result of numerical taxonomy or analysis is a, uh, can be summarized in a tree-like diagram called dendrogram. This is one dendrogram. Then, that's all about different classification systems. Next, we can see major characteristics used in taxonomy. Morphological, physiological, biochemical, ecological and genetic characters can be used. Morphological characters, very easy to study and analyze. Then comparison is valuable because of many structural features depends on the expression of many genes. Light microscopy is an important tool. Transmission electron microscope and scanning electron microscope also help the study of all microbial groups. Morphological characters employed are cell shape, cell size, colony morphology, staining, cilia, flagella, ultrastructural characters, mechanism of motility, color, etc. Physiological and metabolic characters mainly employed are carbon source, energy source, nitrogen source, cell wall components, general nutritional type, storage, inclusion, bodies, etc. Ecological characters means closely related organisms can differ considerably with respect to their ecological characteristics. That is, microorganisms living in different parts of a human body will differ from one another. Main ecological properties employed are life cycle patterns, nature of symbiotic relationships, ability to cause disease in a particular host, habitat preferences such as requirements of temperature, pH, oxygen and osmotic concentration. Then genetic analysis, we can use transformation and conjugation in classification. Plasmids are also important in taxonomy because almost all bacterial genera process plasmids. Molecular characteristics, comparison of proteins. Amino acid sequences of proteins are direct reflections of mRNA sequences. So, closely related to the structures of genes coding for the synthesis. Comparison of proteins are taxonomically very useful because of this reason. They, there are two or several methods to compare proteins. Here we are given two methods that is determination of amino acid sequence, determination of electrophoretic mobility of proteins. First one is determination of amino acid sequence. It is the most direct approach. Here, if the sequences of proteins with same function are similar, the organism possessing them are probably closely related. The method is slow and expensive. Determination of electrophoretic mobility of proteins. Useful in studying the relationship at the species and subspecies level. Antibodies can discriminate between very similar proteins. Enzyme characteristics reflect the amino acid sequence so can be used in studying some microbial groups. Next is nucleic acid base composition. The presence of or the percent of GC content in the DNA reflects the base sequence and varies with change in the sequence. Two methods are available, chemical method and physical method for determination. In chemical method, it is done by hydrolysis of DNA uh, then and analyze its base, uh, basis with HPLC. That is high performance liquid chromatography. Physical method, it is very simple and commonly used here. The determination of melting temperature of DNA is done. DNA with greater GC content has a greater melting point. GC content of strains with a part, within a particular species is always constant. Organisms phenotypically alike with similar GC content, they suggest close relatedness. Then, nucleic acid hybridization. Similarity between genomes can be compared directly by this method. Here, one example is given in the diagram. We can see three samples of DNA. We have to separate these uh, three strands of DNA by melting. After that, they are cooled and renatured. If the uh, strands, DNA strands of the three samples are closely related, they can form hybrids. And if they are distantly related, they do not, uh, if they are not related, they do not form hybrids. 
that is nucleic acid hybridization here at first we have to select the dna samples to be compared then they are denatured at uh, temperatures above melting temperature cooling is done and renaturation occurs if the complementary strands form double stranded dna and uh, non complementary strands remain single that is if they are related they will form hybrid two strains whose dna show at least 70 percentage relatedness under optimal hybridization conditions and less than a 5 percentage difference in melting temperature often are considered members of the same species dna dna hybridization is used to study only closely related microbes more distantly related microbes can be compared using dna rna hybridization methods Next is nucleic acid sequencing. Here, RNA sequencing is most widely used in taxonomy. It is an ideal tool for studying microbial evolution and relatedness. It's a gold standard for identification and description of a new species. Here, we are choosing the functional uh, ribosomal RNA is taken because the functional role of ribosomal RNA is same in all ribosomes. The structure it is dormant, that is, it changes very slowly with time. And our RNA contains both variable and stable. Stable sequences so can be used for comparing closely related and very distantly related microorganisms. Because of these reasons, we are choosing RNA for nucleic acid sequencing. RNA sequencing can be done by oligonucleotide cataloging method, and the RNA taken is 16S RNA. A bacterium should be considered as a new species if its 16S RNA gene sequence it differs by more than 3 percentage from any named strain. And a bacterium should be considered as a new genus if it differs by more than 5 percentage from any named strain. Either complete or specific RRNA fragments can be compared. When comparing the RRNA sequences between two organisms, the relatedness is represented or calculated by an association coefficient. Higher the value of association coefficient, the more closely related the organisms. Uses of DNA sequences to determine species identity. DNA sequences can also be used to determine the species strains in addition to genes. Then it requires analysis of genes that evolve more quickly than RRNA encoding genes. Here we are using 5 to 7 house peaking, house keeping genes are compared that is multi locus sequence typing is used here the sequencing and comparison comparison of 5 to 7 housekeeping genes are done instead of a single gene this is done to prevent the misleading results from analysis of a single gene next is genome fingerprinting it is used for uh, this genomic fingerprinting it is used for microbial classification and determination of phylogenetic relationships. Here we are using restriction endonucleases. These enzymes are used for uh, making small uh, nucleotide sequences. After that, uh, these uh, restriction enzymes cut the DNA at specific sites and the fragments obtained are compared by gel electrophoresis. And this allows the identification at species subspecies levels and even at strain level identification is possible using genomic fingerprinting so genomic fingerprinting it is done with the help of restriction endonuclease enzyme which cut the dna at specific sites and the fragments are compared by gel electrophoresis that's all about bacterial taxonomy hope you all understand the section thank you have a nice day and I am wishing you all a very happy Christmas.